Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains spooky. And today, we are going to discuss railroads. Not just locomotives, not just rolling stock, railroads in general, but railroads that for one reason or another are kind of spooky or scary or just frightening. The reasons I chose these varies greatly, but they all in their own way have some element of fear about them. These are five of the scariest railroads ever. The Georgetown Loop Railroad. Bit of a vanilla choice, and one I didn't expect when I first started doing research on this, because this railroad was located in the United States. Go figure. This is a 3-foot, or 914mm, narrow-gauge railroad located in the Rocky Mountains in Clear Creek County. It's adjacent to Interstate 70 in Colorado. The railroad was actually first built in 1885, but it was dismantled by the end of the 1930s. In the 80s, it was actually rebuilt, though, and opened as a heritage railroad for tourists. Now, you may be wondering, what's so scary about the railroad? Well, there's two major factors that I put into it when deciding to put this one on the list. For one thing, the location. Are you afraid of heights? This is very important to me, and it's super relevant to the situation. This railroad ascends an elevation of 640 feet, or 195.1 meters through mountainous terrain. They have uh, particular bridges, like the new High Bridge, that are a little uh, scary to cross. No clear guardrails and very high winds in that region can make it seem a bit treacherous to the passengers. Though, it's worth mentioning that there haven't been any major incidents, it's just the thought that enters your mind, especially if you have a phobia of high places. So, to call it unsafe is not something I'm willing to say, but a little scary for someone with an active imagination, a genuine phobia of heights, yeah, I can see that being a problem. But its history is a little scary to rail fans, because this place, um, went through a period of really, really bad management. In 2004, when contract negotiations between the Colorado Historical Society and the Loop's operator, Georgetown Loop Railroad Incorporated, broke down, the GLR rejected the new contract, and the CHS began seeking out new bids for the railroad. They awarded it to a company called Railstar Incorporated. Georgetown Loop Railroad Inc. retained ownership of all the original equipment being used, and they moved it to the Colorado Railroad Museum for storage. That left Railstar to purchase new equipment to use on the tourist lines. Almost immediately, the line became plagued with issues. Railstar's management ability was, um, questionable at best. They had a significant lack of steam locomotives, which is one thing, but they had a bunch of derailments, and that resulted in a Federal Railroad Administration investigation. Given the location of this particular railway, a cataclysmic derailment could actually cause someone to die, like, very easily, even at the low speeds, just because of the height they're working at. Railstar also had a habit of purchasing unreliable equipment that broke down and left the railroad closed for days at a time during peak tourist season. The big incident, though, happened in 2006. They made an attempt to restore the Colorado and Southern Railway steam locomotive number 9. The restoration actually worked. It was successful, and the locomotive began working the lines that summer, but Railstar managed it so horribly that they actually damaged the locomotive badly enough to render it inoperable before that one summer season was even over. That's less than three months on the calendar. How did they do that? Well, apparently they just kept making it pull trains it wasn't designed to pull. Because of this, she was put back on static display, and she's unlikely to ever run again. Fortunately, in 2009, the CHS had enough of Railstar, awarding a new contract to a local Georgetown businessman. The new company he founded is called Historic Rail Adventures, LLC. And based on all accounts, the new management is a lot better. So you can rest assured that everything there is probably taken care of well nowadays. It's just the height thing that remains. That's a little spooky. The Pamban Bridge. I know this isn't a specific railway, it's just a bridge, but you have to see this bridge. It's very important to me. Um, okay, the bridge uh, connects the town of Mandapam in mainland India with Panban Island and Grand Swaram. It opened on the 24th of February 1914, and it was India's first sea bridge. 
It's generally speaking a normal bridge that rests on concrete piers, but it's very low over the water, and as trains go over it, it tends to sway a bit. This can be alarming uh, if you have a fear of water, or drowning, or anything to do with either of those things. The only major incident, to be fair, was the result of a storm surge that knocked over a passenger train and killed 200 people. But that wasn't really the bridge's fault, it was the nature of the weather. However, a fissure in the bridge was noticed on the 4th of December 2018, and that closed the bridge for over a year while they repaired it. I wouldn't go so far as to say the bridge is inherently dangerous. Again, there haven't been any major mishaps that were as a result of the bridge's construction directly, so I would say it could instill a level of fear with the swaying, and if you have a fear of water. The Argo Geed? 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 How do you pronounce that, Indonesia? Because I'm not really 100% on this, and I know no matter what I say, I'm going to get it wrong, and my Indonesian fans are going to be like, excuse me, sir, how dare you not speak our language, you monster. That's what's scary on this channel. You know what the real fear is? Seeing how horribly I'm going to mispronounce something in every video I make. Never fails. The Argo Geed, I'm just going to say Geed, I don't know if that's right, but I'm going to say Geed Railroad, is located in Indonesia. It's been extremely popular with tourists because, frankly, the line is absolutely gorgeous. The scenic views you see on it are nearly unrivaled when it comes to any kind of railroad adventure across the world. But there is at least one part of the trip that's a little alarming, and now we're back to the heights thing. I feel like there's a lot of issues with heights, but this one... Yo. Okay, um, this bridge is... No. The Kikuru Tug Bridge, which again I'm hopefully saying right, this is gonna be a disaster, isn't it? It's very tall, for one, and the bridge has no fence along the side of it despite its great height. Modern designers actually have argued about the complete safety of this bridge, because if a train does derail on it, there's pretty much nothing to stop it from careening over the side. Though, to its credit, the last major accident that occurred on the bridge happened in 2002, and it didn't result in anything horrible. Nobody died. Like, it wasn't even a major accident in any way. It was just a minor derailment. So, the argument could be made that the bridge might not be that dangerous in the grand scheme of things. Given the speeds they generally run at, and as long as they keep it well-maintained, it's probably okay. But, this is another one where the thought of what could happen might traumatize some people, who just don't like considering the possibility that they might fall and suffer a horrible grisly death. The Devil's Nose Train Ride. You called it Devil. Great, there's a lot going on here in this location in Ecuador. It's known for its incredibly windy nature. That does have incredible views, but yo, what the heck is going on around here? People actually pay a lot of money for this ride, despite the fact that a significant portion of the line seems a little intimidating. Just, just a bit, just a bit. In part of the line, it actually descends 100 meters in just 12 kilometers, which is lunacy for a train. But what's really scary about this particular rail line is the history associated with it. See, construction on this line actually began in 1872 and wasn't completed until 1905. And given the general working standards in the late 1800s, it probably isn't a surprise to many of you that just so many people died to make this railway happen. Over 4,000 people were employed to work on the railway. A significant portion of them were Jamaican and it's estimated that at least 2,000 of those died while building it. Now, I've got on record repeatedly saying that I genuinely don't believe in ghosts. But, assuming on the basis that I am wrong about this, this rail line is probably haunted. That's what I'm saying. If there are ghosts, if there are ghosts, and uh, they were going to haunt a place, it would be here. That's where I'm at. Well, this one, and the next one, to be honest. The next one's actually a lot worse. The Burma Railway, which is sometimes called the Siam Burma Railway, or the Thai Burma Railway, or, or also, also let me check my notes here, um, yes, yes, it's also known as the DEATH RAILWAY. Why would you ask for that kind of trouble? Well, there's a lot to unpack here, and 
There is a good reason for it, actually. It's not just made up for tourists. This railway is a 415 kilometer or 258 mile railway between Banpong, Thailand, and Myanmar. It was built between 1940 and 1943 by the Japanese during World War II. On the 8th of December 1941, Japan invaded Thailand. They had no choice but to surrender. They were severely outmatched by the Japanese forces. Thailand was forced to accept an alliance with Japan, and as a result, the Japanese used it as a staging point to attack Singapore. In 1942, Japanese forces invaded Burma, and then seized control of that colony from the United Kingdom. At the time, they depended upon the sea to bring supplies to their forces, and this route was very vulnerable to Allied attack from submarine, or anything else, really. So, in June of 1942, they began a project to build a railway from Bangkok to Rangoon. Pretty much immediately, it was decided they were going to use slave labor to accomplish this. POWs were moved northward from Changi Prison and other prison camps in Southeast Asia, starting in May of 1942. Construction of the railway began on the 16th of September, 1942. Now, from a construction and design standpoint, the railway is not only alarming in certain areas because of the way the bridges are set up, but also actually pretty impressive. Given the fact they were using unskilled labor to accomplish it, and the fact that a quarter million people were involved total, the completion of it on the 17th of October 1943 was actually really impressive, given the length and the time that had passed. The terrain was hellish, and even skilled labor would have struggled with it, but... Remember, the line was built with POWs forced to work on it. As a result, well, uh, that's where we're going to get into some dark categories that I in no way can make a joke about. Now, part of the line was built by Japanese soldiers, 12,000 of them to be exact, and 800 Koreans were also employed on the railway as engineers, guards, and supervisors of the POW laborers. 180,000 Southeast Asian civilian laborers which might as well have been slaves, were pressed to work on the railway. And as for the POWs, well, a significant portion of them, roughly 61,000 Allied POWs as estimated, were Australian. Some were from the UK, others were Dutch. It varied greatly, but the point was they were treated absolutely horribly. During their time working on the railway, besides malnutrition and physical abuse, many died of malaria, cholera, dysentery, and tropical ulcers. Numbers are all over the place regarding how many died, but it was a lot, and it was really terrible for everybody involved. Also, the construction of this railway was counted as a war crime committed by Japan during World War II, due to the nature in which they accomplished it. But the railway is still there, used for more respectable purposes nowadays. The line is still quite treacherous and scary in that right, but in this aspect, I think the fear factor just comes from the backstory. Like I said in the last one, that rail line, if you do believe in ghosts, can probably be considered haunted, but this one? Okay, look, if there are ghosts, I'm just gonna stress this, if there are ghosts, this railway is haunted. There's no way it's not. That's impossible. It's impossible for it not to be if ghosts exist. That's where I'm at with it. That's what I'm saying. And with that, a special thank you goes to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Sundu 267, Orange Glass, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, DM Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, Twin Fox, Dime Blade 17, Anzac A1, Alaric Jaspers, Tommy Rossini, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, and Ty Hammonds Jr. Till next time, this is Darkness, and a bit of a fond farewell.